The Switch 2 might suck donkey nuts, but with it right around the corner, what's more fun than to place our bets for what we'll see in a few months' time? We are going to go over what I want to see, what we probably will see, and what is unlikely for us to see. At the end of the day, I'm sure this video is going to age just fine, like my videos before the Switch's launch. Happy Feet! Wombo Combo! That ain't Falco! That ain't Falco! Oh! 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 Congratulations, you played yourself. With all that being said, I have a few categories I want to cover here. Features new and returning and what we might lose. What comes in the box and how it's going to function. And an overall look at what kind of power we might be able to expect. And throughout this whole video, we are under the expectation that this system is going to be fully backwards compatible and continue to be a hybrid system. Alright, the first category features new and returning and what we might lose. I've got two different sections for this. I've got the hardware side of things and the software side of things. First off with the hardware, I think we need to see motion controls. It's not not a need, it's not a want, it's a Nintendo's going to do it. I think ever since the Wii, motion controls have been baked into Nintendo's identity, and there's no way that we're ever going to get a system without motion controls. Uh, most likely it's just going to be gyro, it's not going to be anything like with the Wii. But, I mean, we've got Splatoon, and gyro aiming is so baked into Splatoon, I couldn't possibly see a Nintendo system without it. The system is also definitely going to have Joy-Con support. I don't think it's going to be, like, in the box, but I do think that we're going to have Joy-Cons usable on the system. I think it's going to be kind of like the Wii U, where we had Wii controller support, but no Wii controllers in the box, just the Wii U gamepad. I'm going to get into a bit more why I say that later on in the video. I think we might see a camera for some sort of AR support. I know AR was something that we saw with the 3DS, it was something that we saw with the PSP, I believe, with uh, Invisimals. But I think there might be something that Nintendo sees in AR for it to come back. I highly doubt we're going to get anything like LiDAR sensors like we have in the iPhone. But still, a camera might happen. That, that's definitely on the uh, maybe side of things there. But I do think that we definitely lose the IR camera. I think that Nintendo has tried the IR camera a few too many times with it being a flop every time to continue adding it in their systems. I'm talking things like the 3DS, the only use that I ever saw for the IR camera was the uh, second analog stick attachment that they had. Um, don't know anybody who ever had that. But then on the Switch, we have the IR camera again, and the only thing I remember ever using that IR camera for was eating sandwiches in 1-2 Switch. Oh, and it does act as a uh, heartbeat sensor for Ring Fit Adventure. I think we're going to keep HD Rumble, even though we haven't seen very much from HD Rumble for the entirety of the Switch's lifespan. I think it's just because that motor that they use is a much smaller, compact motor that we're not going to go back to the old motors. It would just be too much for something that's a handheld. Those are my only points for hardware side of things. Uh, next, we go into the software. I think we need to see a revamped eShop. This is not a want, this is a need in my eyes. The eShop is horrible. There's plenty of videos, people complaining about it. You have probably experienced your own horrible time with the eShop. It's just something that needs to change. I want to see more personality out of the system. I want to see more music. I want to see more fun things around the console. I want to see uh, music in the eShop, music in the settings. I want to see themes. Themes. Please give us themes for the console. You know, don't just give us black and white. Let us at least set like a background photo for our console. You know, even if it's not fully customizable, maybe it's something like uh, how you can set achievement photos as your background on like Xbox and PlayStation, but something, anything. I just. I want to see more than black and white. Along with that personality change is some more customization for folders and layout options. I want to see something more along the lines of the 3DS where you could change out the layout and you could add folders in very easily. I think that's something that's a uh, need, not a want at this point. Now we get into something a little bit more controversial. I think most of the fan base wants to see this, but I don't see it coming back 100%, and that would be Street Pass. Street Pass was a system seller for me on the 3DS. I thought it was a super cool addition to the console, and years later, people are still ranting and raving about it and missing it more than ever. I think it would be amazing if we saw the return of something like this, but I kind of highly doubt it as much as we all want it. We just don't see anything out there with that kind of functionality nowadays. And with all these personality and customization improvements, I want to bring up an idea of mine on why I think we haven't seen more of this in the Switch, why we haven't seen things like voice chat, or just a friends list, uh, a more robust friends list in general. 
is because I think that we might be seeing something akin to the snap feature on Xbox One. For those of you that owned an Xbox One in the first two years of its life, you know the snap feature was a feature where you could throw any app up on a sidebar and just have it going during gameplay. Now the snap feature was taken out of the Xbox One because Microsoft wanted to give more computing power to the Xbox One and the snap feature was just simply taking too much of that away. I think it's for the same reason that we don't see a lot of the same features on Switch because they're really trying to get the most power that they can out of these small chips that they're using. Alright, the next category, what comes in the box and how it's going to function. I see this system coming with a dedicated docked controller in the box. I'm talking something like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller in the box. The reason I say this is because I think the system itself will be something akin to the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally where the controllers are on the system itself and then you can dock it to a monitor at any point you want. Along with having the dedicated controller for docked mode and the controllers attached to the system, I think it might finally be time that we see analog triggers on a Nintendo system again. I don't know if you guys realize this, but the only time we've ever had analog triggers on a Nintendo system was back on the GameCube, and ever since then, whenever they tried to do anything with analog, it's always been a problem. The reason analog triggers are a point of contention for me is because when it comes to open world games, games where you drive around, driving simulators, they're always worse on Nintendo's platforms just because we don't have analog triggers. I remember when Watch Dogs 1 came out on the Wii U, this was also a point of contention there. Uh, no analog triggers, there's no throttle control, it's all or nothing. And people care about it a little bit more than you would think. And being as something like the Steam Deck and I believe the ROG Ally have analog triggers and they are portable devices, I think we might finally see analog triggers on a Nintendo system. As far as the design of the actual console, I think we're going to get something that's like a larger Switch Lite, but with a 6.5 inch display that kind of reaches top to bottom. Um, I'm thinking about as tall as the current Switch, maybe not as wide as the current Switch, and a little bit more ergonomic, you know, something that's not just a flat slate. But as much as I believe that this is my dream Switch 2, I think we might not see it just because it doesn't leave much room for iteration on the Switch 2's design like we've seen with the normal Switch, the Switch OLED, and the Switch Lite. There's a lot of iteration for design there, but I think jamming all these things together while it's the best of all worlds, it doesn't leave much to be changed in the future. And finally, last but not least, what are we going to see as far as performance go and some more technical specs of the system? I think we're going to get something akin to the power of an Xbox One X. I say that kind of with an asterisk because there's some things that I want to touch on. I think that as far as RAM goes, as far as memory goes, we're going to get 8 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, probably running around 3200 megahertz. Um, the Xbox One X has 12 gigabytes of RAM. I don't know that we're going to see that because Nintendo has always been behind on that front. The original Switch has only 4 gigabytes and that seemed insane to me back in 2017 that they were releasing a system that didn't even have 8 gigs when most phones at that time were coming out with, I believe, at least 6 gigs. I don't think that we're going to see the super fast hard drives that we've seen out of the other consoles unless Nintendo really thinks that it is a necessity. I think we're going to continue to see micro SD storage and as far as onboard storage, Nintendo hasn't been too nice to us about that one either. I think we're only going to see 64 gigabytes of onboard storage for the launch console and then probably later down the line a 128 gigabyte console if we're lucky. As far as the screen on the system goes, I think we'll probably see a 1080p LCD running at about 60 hertz. I think we're going to be lucky if we see 1080p, and as far as the 60 hertz goes, I really don't think Nintendo is going to be pushing high refresh rates with this system, or I don't think that they're going to be doing that for a long time. So I think 60 hertz is locked in, 1080p would probably be best case scenario on the screen. And in docked mode, I think we're going to be targeting about a 2K resolution, that being 1440p. I highly doubt 4K being a target for games on this system. I think we might see that when it comes to maybe like a Netflix or Hulu or maybe YouTube. We could have 4K support, but I highly doubt that the games would actually be targeting 4K resolutions. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. But the longer this video goes on, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I believe that... It's not quite going to be on the lines of an Xbox One X. I'm thinking more closer to the lines of a PS4 Pro. I know that they're not too far away from each other, but when you look at the numbers, I don't know. Nintendo likes to undercut us a lot. They like to come out with weak systems in the past 20 years. I think that what I've outlined in this video is probably our best case scenario for what we might see out of a Switch 2. 
If you guys think anything differently, if you have any ideas for what you want to see, what you think we might see, please leave them in the comments down below. I respond to each and every one of you. Other than that, I hope you guys and gals have enjoyed this video. This has been Captain SNES, signing out. Peace.